Well, it's, it is, as people have been saying, Parliament taking charge of the process. And we've had these indicative votes uh, in a few things before. The most um, significant recent times was really, uh, I think, about the reform of the House of Lords, where famously MPs rejected all the options, including not uh, doing anything at all. So this is a way of testing the mood. But this one is different because MPs themselves have said, not the government, the MPs have said, look, we are going to take charge of this process. And that's, that's, that's what's happened. And at the moment, they have the, uh, the power to do that. What was striking to me is the idea that Theresa May's deal, the one that the government has spent 18 months negotiating with the European Union, is not going to be one of the options available. Why, therefore, is this useful as a process if you can't stack up the level of support for some of these alternatives against the level of support for the Prime Minister's deal? Or are we just to assume that the level of support for the Prime Minister's deal is where it was last time round? We should assume nothing. No, the, the, the reason is to test out you know, theoretical ones, if you, if you like, everyone's favourite option, and then uh, to see whether that produces enough support uh, for her deal to pass. And uh, that, I think the government's, uh, you know, obviously had some um, uh, consideration about you know, whether or not it would have liked uh, the, the, its own deal to be on the, uh, the table. But I can see tactically from the government's point of view why uh, why this makes more sense. In any case, MPs have decided to put out this menu of options and uh, of theoretical options and pick among them. For those watching outside the UK, they may not be aware that more than 5 million people have signed a petition calling for a revocation of Article 50, yes. i.e. let's end this process altogether. Uh, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people marching on the streets of London over the course of the weekend calling for a people's vote or an end to the Brexit process. And I'm just wondering, do you think that has played any part in increasing pressure on the government or on the Conservative Party, given that the response to that from the government, to that petition at least, is like, so what? I don't think it's put pressure on the government. I think it's emboldened some of the MPs who are, are leaning towards, you know, remain hoping for second referendum, that kind of thing, to keep in play uh, those options which have been really buffeted around in the past few weeks. And it's certainly um, invigorated, if you like, the Europeans are watching this very closely about how they might influence the, the process. So people know there is a big body of public support out there. People absolutely know that the public is very engaged with this. Um, I think it's given MPs of all kinds a sense that uh, people, are, people are watching and the country's attention is very much on this. But it hasn't, I think, um, because it doesn't have any you know, r r immediate power, it hasn't really tipped the balance. Over the last few months, a lot of the suggestions put forward in Parliament, and that's no different tonight, have come from lawmakers of different parties. We call that cross-party uh, in terms of an effort here. And I'm just wondering, what do you think that means for the continued survival of political parties here in the United Kingdom? I think it's a very good question. I think the political parties, as we are looking them at them at the moment, are broken. Uh, both Conservatives and Labour have big divisions in them, and that's not just about Brexit. It's really about completely different views of how to govern the country and what Britain is in the future. And, uh, and, and those big rifts will be there even if you manage to magically take away the whole Brexit issue. So there has to be a question about whether both parties can survive as they are. And the pressure is really on the Conservatives because they're in government and the question of about whether there is any leader they can coalesce behind. And if it isn't Theresa May, who is it? Um, but the, the pressure is there on Labour as well. So, you know, as we roll this on, it is possible that, for example, if Labour uh, won a general election with a majority, that MPs would mysteriously fall in behind and say, they take the old bargain, perhaps, and say, I'll take promotion rather than uh, stand up for my own views, I'll fall in with the party line. But it's also possible that they would say, look, I really don't see the future as Jeremy Corbyn sees it, and um, no, we, we need a new party. I think we could be moving towards an era of many smaller parties, reflecting the fact that Britain is uh, a very complicated country with a lot of people with very different views. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.